Hi everyone, it's Tammy from Lufer Fruit Studio and I am back from my vacation and I wanted to do a quick flip through of the completed journal that I did with Amy's Digitals from Crafty Cat. I used her Digitals Ribbit and Croak um, to make a journal and there are some previous videos to this to show how I put it all together and I have finally finished it and the only thing I have left to do is I want to do some stamping and I think I mentioned in other videos that I like to do that at the end to see where I need stuff so that's what we're going to do as we flip through it and then I've got a couple of other things to show you that I'm going to be listing in my shop so let's get started and um get this baby wrapped up so that we can um, move on to the next fun thing we're going to do. Uh, this has been a great project. I have loved it. And as you can see, it turned out pretty chunky, which is how I like them. Um... And uh, this has been a really fun one. So thank you, Amy, for asking me to do this. I have really enjoyed it. So uh, as you have seen in the previous videos, and if you haven't, there is a playlist. Um, I took a brown paper bag, and that's what the journal is constructed out of, is a brown, just a brown paper bag. And I made all these little, cool little inserts to put in the front. Um, this is a passport and some little field records for our little nature um, person that studies frogs and toads. And this is a kit that is available by Bohemian Crafting. And then this is a tag that I made here. And this is one of Amy's digitals. For It's a CD cover and it has a closure on it. And it has just a little journal card on the inside. If I can get it out. My fingers are very sore. They are very not used to crafting. So my, after being off and so my hands are very stiff. And it has just a tea dyed paper on the back. And then this is just a policy envelope that I made out of one of the digital pages. And it has of course the little wrap around thing. And then this is the cover, and I used Tim Holtz uh, tissue paper, like I said, on the brown paper bag. And then I used this little cross hatching um, binding, and this is from Bohemian Crafting as well. That little, that's where I saw it. I mean, I'm sure other people have done it. So, as we go inside, you're going to see there's lots of pockets and tucks with her beautiful papers and um, little pieces of ephemera um, everywhere. And um, I've done some stamping and some stenciling and um, just made, you know, different little tags. And I did end up making um, circle tags for the little pockets that have the circle cut out here, which are in the kit. And I just thought that turned out really cute. And then I've got several of these little corrugated cardboard dangles um, hanging off the side with the little mini clips and the little charms. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through here. Like here, I would like a number of some sort. I believe. So I'm looking here. I've got this little plastic thing that has all my favorite stamps on it. It's like a piece of acetate. And um, that's just how I keep them 
because actually, whoops, I think I want that black. So I'll kind of tell you about my trip as I'm flipping through this and trying to get all this done is um, if I can if I can stamp and talk at the same time. We had a fabulous time. The weather was absolutely beautiful. We couldn't have asked for anything better. We were expecting because of looking at weather and, and things like that and the weather they had had the previous week and what the forecast was, we were totally expecting that to be, I just did that upside down. We were totally um, expecting it to be cold and rainy um, and it was absolutely not, um, like I said, we couldn't have asked for any better weather than what we got. It was in, uh, you know, low to mid sixties. It didn't rain one single drop except for one night when we were at sea. Apparently we had pretty rough seas, but Ed and I both slept through it. And so... Um, you know, we didn't even know the seas were rough till we got up the next morning and, 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 um, we could feel, you know, the boat swaying and it did sway quite a bit. So if you're used to doing, um, cruises to like the Caribbean and places like that, um, we have never been on a cruise, but the people on the boat were telling us that it's very different from a Caribbean cruise because you do feel the motion of the boat and we definitely did feel it, um, you know, the day that we were at sea, at, especially the next morning after, after the storms. So um, that's one thing to be aware of if you do do it, um, the Alaskan cruise. Uh, what else? You know, it was beautiful absolutely beautiful. The scenery is just amazing. The wildlife is amazing. We saw lots of whales and lots of, we saw bear, eagles, um, mountain goats, uh, uh, sea otters, you name it, we pretty much saw it. Um, one of the stops that we went to, uh, was Icy Point Strait, which is not a normal stop. Normally they go to Skagway and they didn't, um, they went to Icy Point on this one and, uh, it actually, uh, has a beach, a walkable beach and, um, it's really weird because you've got the beach and um, the mountains going right down into the beach and the mountains have snow on them and, you know, then you've got the beach. And so that was kind of a strange deal, but it was also really cool. And I picked up some, whoops, I picked up some stuff off the beach that I'm going to use in journals for closers and stuff like that. And I'll show you those too. But fabulous trip. Uh, my husband and I did decide that if we ever went on another one, it would not be a seven day cruise because we, um, there was too much downtime on the boat. Um, and I'm sure a lot of that is because of you know what, and they can't do you know the some of the activities that they normally do on a ship. But um, we did feel like there was a lot of downtime, and um, a lot of time you know just at sea without uh, just without a lot of things that. Um, to do. There's, of course, a casino on the boat, but we're not really big gambling people, although we were very lucky. And um, my husband likes to play blackjack, and of course, I, 
I don't know how to do anything. And so I was, you know, doing the slot machines, but um, just for, you know, while he was playing. But uh, we both did very well. And um, actually came back with more money than we left with. So, you know, that's always a good thing when that happens. So we'll take that. But I will tell you, if you have a cruise planned, um, there were cases of you-know-what on the ship, and uh, we're kind of following a Facebook group that was people that were on our cruise, and there are more positives every day since we've been home. So we have been kind of self-isolating uh, just to be safe. And um, we both tested yesterday and tested negative. So I think we've dodged that bullet, but um, I will tell you that that is still a thing on the cruises, even though we had to jump through so many hoops and um, actually had to do a test in Seattle before we got on the boat and all that kind of stuff. It was still there, unfortunately. So, oh, sorry, I'm not explaining as I'm going. I'm just going through and stamping. Um, stenciling here. Uh, this is Amy's Papers. You know, this is a pocket that I made out of a... Um, a window envelope, you know, just junk mail envelope, and more stenciling here, and these are out of the digitals, of course, and I just added a couple of things. Um, this is one of the uh, four tag woven pockets that I saw on a video from Gail. Augusta Nelly, uh, more stamps and stenciling here. Um, this is out of the kit, and I did some stenciling, and then I made this is a paper clip that I made out of one of the die cut bugs or fussy cut bugs that were in the kit. I thought that was cute to make a little paper clip out of that. I'd like to put a stamp here, but I'm not sure what I want to do. But anyway, overall, uh, you know, even with that being said and all that went on, it was a uh, very well, very good trip and very well worth it. And um, I'm glad we did it. And uh, I would recommend it. To anyone who enjoys that kind of thing, you know, the nature and the scenery and all that. So, and we've been trying to recover because, you know, we lost three hours when we went to Seattle and then another hour when we went, you know, got into Alaska. So, you know, we were four hours behind, and then we came home, and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, we should be going to bed now, and it's, you know, nine o'clock Seattle time, so we've had problems adjusting back to, to normal, as far as that goes, but, uh, like I said, overall, we're quite, quite pleased with how the trip went and what we saw. And uh, at some point, I will show you my journal that I kept while I was traveling. I don't have it quite finished yet because I have some more pictures that I need to print out for that, 
but uh, it did work out really well. And I bought a journal at the public market in Seattle. And I'll show you that when we get through with this. It was a gentleman there that was made made journals and uh, it's not a junk journal, but I really liked it and I got it for myself for a couple of reasons. One, um, you know, I wanted something for myself to write in and the other reason is because I wanted to see most of his clients that were there shopping and buying were men. And so, um, I wanted to kind of bring that home with me and, uh, you know, kind of do some stuff. I don't do a lot of things that are masculine or that are for men. So I thought that would be kind of cool to do something more masculine. And you see, I'm not really worried if these stamps are coming out totally clear because um, I want them to look kind of used and, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Because I obviously don't. I'm going to put this little bug right down here in the corner of this paper. But I hope everybody has had a good couple of weeks while I was gone. I have to go back to work tomorrow. Don't want to do that. But, you know, it is what it is. But I do start my four days a week and so that'll be nice I'll have an extra day for doing some journaling and that'll be a change for me, something to get used to, but I think I can adapt. <laughs> uh, the roughest time I had while, while I was gone is my nails. I broke a nail, I think, every day, and not only did they break, but they broke, like, way down, and so I can't even do anything with them, and so they're uh, definitely look pretty cruddy right now, so I do apologize for that. Okay, uh, this is just coffee dye paper, lined paper here. Um, here's another circle uh, pocket that I made out of an old uh, index card, and I stuck a couple Amy's cards in it. I just wanted to continue the circle more than just that one tag um, that we had done so that I could, uh, you know, kind of tie it together a little bit. Then we have the CD case here, and it just has a journal card in the in the back of it. And I used a piece of the linen washi, um, Tim Holtz, just to uh, tie these two pages together. And I made, I took one of Amy's journaling cards and put it, made it a little bit bigger so there's a little bit more writing space and this is just a piece of tea dyed notebook paper that you know I don't know if y'all have ever tried to tea dyed notebook paper but the lines run and I thought it kind of matched the runny lines that Amy had in her paper so I just put that back there um again I made this little tuck I did some stenciling. I made a little pocket here with these two little things in it. And uh, I want something up here. So what do we want up there? 
Maybe a big butterfly. Or ooh, I've got a dragonfly. Let's do a dragonfly. <clears throat> this is what I store my clear stamps in. And um, I think I ordered these from scrapbook.com. And I just prefer them. And I take all my stamps are, as you can see, bugs. They're not by manufacturer so much. They're by what they are. So, um, it's just easier for me. You know, definitely don't have to do it that way, but I do it that way. It's just because... If I go to look for one, I'm usually looking for a particular thing, so it just makes it easier. And I think my little black soot is about to run out. But yeah, I've just been busy. I have my Jeep scheduled to go in to be worked on, not worked on, I guess, but you know, maintenance when we got back and so we took and dropped it off we got the oil changed aligned all that kind of fun stuff that you gotta do to take care of your car since i see let me get my archival black archival <clears throat> my big one okay let's try this one because I think that little one is just about dried up. I mean, that didn't even put even the slightest bit of stuff on there. Let's try this one. It's, it's more squishy. Sorry if I got my head stuck in there. Here, yeah, that's better. Okay. Give that just a second. Make sure I don't smear it. Okay, and there's another one. Amy's pockets on one of my tags. And this one's got a little B, and I do think I have a little B stamp, so maybe we'll put a couple of B's over on this page. Nope, not with that one, we won't. See, I still went and grabbed for that little one. Can make sure I got him upside right and all that. There I go, saying upside right again. And here we've got another paper clip that I made out of the bug fussy cut from Amy's kit. And it's just holding that little card on. And then for this, this was a piece that was in Amy's kit that had three dragonflies that were in a straight row. And this paper had three dragonflies that were in a straight row in a straight row so I thought it would be cute to um, glue those like that and then this is some actual graph paper that I had that I thought went with the graph paper she had in the background of her page and then this is a stencil and then um, there is a video on the center piece here and how it's made if you're interested in watching that that's the center of our book. Um, again, more stenciling. 
And this is an envelope that was in Amy's kit. And I just made it a tuck instead of an envelope and put some script behind it. And I think I might want some script right here. And I have my big script stamp. And I got this big stamp at Hobby Lobby. And I'm using Espresso Archival on that. And I probably should have done the other side. And sometimes it does make it difficult if you try to do stamps, um, you know, after you have bound your book. But, you know, like I said, I'm not looking for a perfect stamp. And so it works fine for me. Um, but if you want a more crisp, perfect stamp, then you're probably going to want to do this step before you bind everything together. Again, just a tuck. These are pieces out of the kit. These are pieces out of the kit. I made a corner tuck out of a piece of the paper of the kit. And this is a fussy cut and this is a um, washi sticker. Um, again, this is the back side. I feel like I need something here. Um, and one thing that I do when I'm looking for what I want to stamp or, um, you know, what I want to go here is I look at what I've got, what else I have on the page. Um, for example, these numbers are up here, and so number stamps right here might look really good. Let's see, do I have, I have these, and I think I might just take those and put them down in the corner. Yeah, so we came back here and we have been about to burn up because we've been used to it being cool and it is definitely not cool here. Although today is better because the humidity humidity has gone down some. Um, okay, this is a library pocket and I had this card in my stash which just happened to have a frog on it so I put that in the library card pocket and then I made another little tuck pocket here and put a tag behind it so that's how we got to there um, on this page I've already done some stamping uh, I did the script stamp, I did my little crackle stamp, and the reason I did that is Amy had some of this crackle in her paper. And there's a video on how I made this tag and belly band. Oops, I put a little bit of glue right there. That's why these flip foods are good, because you can see that she's got little hangy parts that need to be fixed. Okay, that'll fit right in here. All right, and this is, of course, Amy's paper. This is her number 10 envelope paper and what I did is I cut out both of the things and then I wrapped it, folded it and wrapped it around the page and so it has a tag holder on each side and I, this is just one of the tags that was in the kit and so is this and then I took some little uh, rub-ons from Tim Holtz and I rubbed on um, just some little words onto the vellum tracing paper that I put in the pocket, put that little bug on there, and uh, 
added these little Tim Holtz die cuts and some washi. This is a washi uh, mushroom and a washi butterfly here, and that's a Tim Holtz butterfly. And then this is in Amy's kit. And then here I just added some real stamps and did a postmark over it. And then on this side, I did the same. I've got some washi um, toadstools right here and the little toad here. And like I said, those are bread bones. And then here I just stapled this card, which is in the kit, and I just put some random stuff behind it. Just kind of tucked it in there. Um, this is just a piece of this one of the tags of the kit, of course, and then this is just a piece of ledger paper that I folded up, and I just tore a piece of Amy's paper to make the corner pocket, and then a, this, of course, is the paper, and then over here, I, this is one of the Fussy Cat Frogs, and I wanted it to look like it was crawling up the page, and again, I've already stamp the script here and did some stenciling. A uh, journaling card here. Again, there's a little bit of stenciling and script. And again, I just tore it to make a little corner pocket. Let's put something there. What do we want to put there? See, I've got a frog and a dragonfly on there. Here's a smaller dragonfly. If I can get it off of there. Man, that one was stuck. And I'm going to do this one in the... And I said this was espresso, and it's not. It's coffee. Archival coffee. And it is a, the permanent ink. Okay. Alright. I got two pages here. Okay, on this page, I just put a label here, and I just did a little collage here with a washi flower and put a butterfly up here. On this side, here's another one of the paper clips that's made out of a Tim Holtz bug, and I stenciled some numbers here with a washi mushroom. And this, I made a big pocket with a field note sheet in there. Added this little flower. And on this one, I added this piece here and this butterfly. And then over here, I made two little tags, just out of tags from Amy's kit. And last but not least, I did this little um, collage here. And I want to put something there too. Where is somewhere I have maybe this? I feel like it needs something round. Nope. I keep grabbing for that little black. I need to put it out of my sight. Okay. And I might want to put a number right there. Maybe another one of those red... Bio. 
old. I'll try not to do this one upside down. And this is the last page, and I do want to put a number here. What do I want to do? This one. I think this one's too long. I think it'd be all right. And then, of course, that's our other tag that we did with the french fry bag or cookie bag. Alright, guys. Actually, I think I want to put some crackle on this page. anything else it looks like it needs a little something Oh, there's my other circle. Um, this is just a circle die cut. It, this is where I had cut out some flowers with Tim Holtz dies, and it's the negative part. And then I just took the circle and um, cut them out. So I just to get that third circle element in there. And then down here, I did some black dots, kind of the black dots on the um, ladybug there, and, uh, as you can see, um, I tr tried to stick with my triangle to keep my colors, um, going on the different pages. You'll see blue, blue, blue on that one, you know, the kind of pinkish color on that one. You'll see the blue, blue, blue here, um, I just think it makes for a nice balanced page. When you try to stick to that method. All right, I think that's got it guys. I'm not saying that I won't add anything else, but I think we're pretty close to calling this one done, 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 and done. So there she is. And again, thank you, Amy, for 
um, asking me to do this. It was a lot of fun, and um, I have enjoyed it immensely, and I think it turned out really cute. Um, and I look forward to working with your papers again. I really like the fairy ones that you have out now, so um, hopefully I'll be doing a fairy journal soon. Um, I've kind of had that on my list, um, but I think I'm going to wait till later in the summer to do that. For me, that's a summery kind of thing, and I've got a couple other projects that I have to finish before I do that, before I venture on that one. And then these just stick down in here. And like I said, this one's a little chunky, but it's not bad at all. Um, it's just a nice full journal. Um, and this binding is really forgiving for, um, you know, a little more overstuffed kind of journal. And uh, so I definitely will be doing this binding again. We're just going to stick everything down in there. And then quickly I'll show you the other things that I'm going to be listing. If I can get that down in there. It's hanging. There we go. So there is that. Done, done, and done. Very happy with it. Okay, the other thing that I have been working on is I'm going to be uh, listing these. These are, I guess you can call them little journal kits or little uh, ephemera kits. Each of these kits, I have five of them, and they all have kind of different themes other than they're all grayscale. And I don't know what if you all watched my video when I did these grayscale things. Um, it was just kind of an experiment that I wanted to try. And um, I made myself work in black and white grays only. Um, there's, you know, not any other colors. And I was really surprised by how much stuff that I had in my stash that was you know, in those colors when I started pulling everything out. And so I ended up making uh, these kits. And like I said, there are five of them all together. And they all have uh, very similar things in them. Um, but uh, the same number of things and very similar things, but they are different. So each one of them has one of these little corner tucks that you put up on the corner of your page and then you can tuck things on both sides of the paper. Um, each one of the kits has one of these. Each one of the kits has one of these uh, tracing paper pockets with a tag in it. Um, you glue down or you can glue just on the sides and make another pocket behind it or a pocket beside of it, however you wanna do it. Um, each one of them has something, some extra piece in it. And for this one, I picked this house because I thought this house belonged to these people. So, um, this is just a Tim Holt, Tim Holtz picture. Um, and, uh, it's on good cardstock. So you could do a lot of things with that. Each one of them has a kind of a fancy tag. This is the actual tag that I made in the video. We're, we're talking about grayscale. So it, it has, you know, each one of them has one of those. Each one of them has one of these, which is a pocket for a journal card. This is a picture that I took in Alaska and I printed it out on my sprocket printer. It's a picture that was hanging in a museum there in a catch can. So the, I thought this little girl with fish was absolutely adorable. Um, I did not take this picture illegally. Pictures were allowed. And uh, so the picture police hopefully aren't going to come get me because I took a picture of that. But I thought that was really cute on this little just journaling card. And uh, the pocket is made out of a 
a botanical page out of a botanical book that I have. And then I just added some little tags and I added a nice stiff backer. And so there again, you know, you can make this other than this pocket, you can make it a pocket here, 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 or, you know, however you want it. It's plenty stiff enough that you can uh, do what you like with it. And then you have a large journaling card that, again, is very stiff that you can, you know, put wherever you want in your journal. And this particular one has a little cat on it and, um, you know, different little things, scraps. That I had that were in that same uh, color zone that we're working on. Zone, for lack of a better word. Tones, I guess. And they all come in just a plain white envelope. There's, you know, the nothing fancy to the envelope other than I wanted something to put them in. And, um, but you do get the envelope as well. And you also get um, this little hangy, and there's one of those for each kit that has a couple little charms on it, and you get, you know, the ribbon and everything. Just how you see it is how you're going to get it. So, there's that one. And, um, like I said, each one of them are a little bit different. Uh, this one, we'll go through them real quick. Um, there's your corner pocket, and this one has a little coin envelope with a little Tim Holtz. Again, you've got your tracing paper, little slotty pocket with a tag. You've got your fancy tag. And you've got your little botanical print with a journal card inside. And I believe I made this one on the video as well. And then you've got your large journal card. So there's that one. And I'll take photos and, and um, list, put them on my Etsy, so of course, so that you can see each piece closer up and have a better view. So that one kind of has a kid's theme to it. Lots of kids in that one. Um, this one is more industrial, office industrial, I guess. You have this little paper clip and you've got a little corner tuck and you have the, the uh, tracing paper tag and you can see it's got um oh advertising in the back of that for like stationery and office supplies you've got a tim holtz picture here's the fancy tag with these two little uh women with typewriter keys and typewriter stuff and here is the journal card in the pocket with the botanical print. It's got the typewriter die. And here is the big journal card for that one. I guess it would be faster if I would just show them to you and not put all this back in there as I'm going along. And this one has an equestrian vibe going on. And there's the corner tuck. And this one has a little envelope that opens up and has a little journaling card inside there. And it has little racing horses here. Um, and then we have this tag. This is the fancy tag. And then we have the tag inside. The 
tracing paper. This is the botanical with the tag. Doesn't that always happen when you're trying to be in a hurry? This is the extra piece. It's just the dip molts, black and white roses. And here is the large journaling card. So that's the equestrian. And the last one is kind of masculine. And for that one, here's the corner tuck piece. Here's a paper clip that looks like a shirt. That's a Tim Holtz piece. This is a little, um, just a little pocket that has a little card inside of it. Here is the tracing paper pocket with the tag. And here's the fancy tag. And I did this one in the video as well. And this is what the one that is botanical for all the others, this is what this one looks like because it's more masculine. And then here's the journaling card for it. I think this one may be my favorite just because it's kind of steampunky and I like that. But All right, so that's all those and I'll try to get those listed this evening. I say that and I can't even get them back in the envelopes. And again, they all have the little hangy tag as, or the little dangles as a piece that can be used in your journal as well. So, um, you know, they all have the dangles with the little charms. Okay, so that's that. And so now let me show you my Alaska finds and then I'll let you guys go. Um, this is the journal that I purchased. This gentleman um, buys the hides that he uses for the journals um, and cuts them himself and he stitches all the signatures in himself and they smell wonderful. They smell like leather and I don't know if you all like the smell of leather or not, but this one, he had uh, his name. I've got his card. His The name of his shop is called No Boundaries in Seattle. And his name is Deneen Shank. And um, he has all different kinds of hides. I picked this one because he had his actual journal sitting there. So you could see um, how it aged and uh, how soft it got and the patina that the leather got. And this one is buffalo hide, I believe, but it turns out to be absolutely gorgeous once it starts getting, you know, broke in. But he does make these. He orders all his paper, or his handmade paper from India, and he cuts it all, and he sews all the uh, signatures in and um, everything, and like they are all blank. But the paper feels wonderful. And um, he uses like a fountain pen in his journal. And it is just beautiful to see the writing in it. But you can see, you know, he does hand bind them. And he, he hand cuts the leather. So I just had to have one because I love the style of this. And, you know, the whole time I'm thinking, okay, how can I adapt this into something I can make? Um, so I'm definitely going to try something like this in the future. Of course, it won't be with real leather because I would absolutely die if I messed it up. So, but 
I would check him out. He does have, um, let's see what this says. It's uh, Deneen at NoBoundariesBooks.com. And he does ship everywhere. So, um, if you're interested in something like this for a gift, he has uh, bigger ones and smaller ones. Um, you know, do check him out because he's got some just fabulous, fabulous journals. And then the last thing before I let you go is I'll show you what I picked up on the beach. Um, this is just, like I said, little things that I found on the beach that I thought I could use in journals down the road. Um, so these are just little pieces of driftwood that I thought would make great closers on journals. You know, you could put it on here and then have it wrap this way. That was my thinking on that. And um, so I thought those were really cool. And I think this one is really cool because when I look at him, I see a bird. And you all may not see that. Do you see that? Or maybe even like a... I don't know. What do you guys see? I saw a bird when I saw it, but I thought that was really cool. So I picked that up. And then we found some shells. And so these are the little shells we found. And then this is a little stone. And again, I thought that would be a really neat wrap for um, a handle or closer. It's that little stone. And then I found this little pine cone. And I just thought that was weird that a pine cone was on the beach. Um, so that's my great finds from Alaska. And, uh, like I said, overall great trip would highly recommend it at least once in your life. If you have get to get to choose somewhere to go, that would definitely be on the top of my list of places to go. So, and that was, that was why we went, because it was on our bucket list. We knew we'd do it once, and that would be it. So, we're glad it turned out so well. So, like I said, I'm excited to be back, and I'm excited to be back to work in my craft room. Um, vacation is nice, but it's also nice to be home. So, um, I'm glad we missed our doggies. Um while we were gone, we had a great house sitter that took great care of them and took great care of our house. So that was great to come home to. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. It will be, uh, I saw it on Pinterest and I, at this point, have no clue what that'll be. But I promise I will find something by Tuesday. And until then, everybody stay healthy and stay safe. And we'll see you then. Bye.